Well, hello again, everyone. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are once again looking at measurement, specifically uh, linear metric measurement. We're on our home links. Uh, uh, we're in Unit 3, Lesson 12, Measuring Centimeters and Millimeters. Okay? So if you take a look at problem number one, it asks you to do something on your own, which is to find six objects in your home to measure. Use the ruler from the bottom of the page to measure them, first in centimeters and then in millimeters, and then record your measurements. Okay, so you're going to want to pick something that is not any bigger than this ruler, so nothing bigger than 15 centimeters. So we're looking at small things like an action figure or a Lego brick or an eraser or, you know, a Cheerio or something like that. Okay, now on the top half of the ruler we see centimeters and the bottom half we see millimeters. And if you notice, for every one centimeter, you get 10 millimeters. Okay, so if you look right here, one centimeter is worth 10 millimeters. Four centimeters would be worth 40 millimeters. So you just skip counting by 10 to see how many millimeters you have. Okay, so let's say I drew a line, or drew a box, I don't know. Here we go. And it was three centimeters in length. Now that box would also be 30 millimeters in length, like so, okay? So it's just another way of looking at that measurement. Now, if I have 30 millimeters, I'm going to say three centimeters, because that's an easier way to frame things. But let's say I have a different box like this one. And it's longer than three centimeters, but not quite to four centimeters. So I want to know a little bit more specifically. Okay, so if I measure this one, I want to line up my edge of my rectangle to the nearest millimeter. So we'll call that 30 34 millimeters, give or take, okay? So that's problem number one. You need to measure six objects in your house, objects that are on the smallish side. Okay, I wouldn't try measuring your living room sofa with this little ruler, okay? Now, as you can see, I have two tables to uh, complete for problems two and three. One is converting centimeters to millimeters, okay? If there are... 10 millimeters for every centimeter, like I said, all you're going to do here is you're going to multiply the number on the left by 10. So 1 times 10 is obviously 10. 15 times 10 is 150, or I just take the 0 and put it behind the number I'm multiplying. So any number multiplied by 10 is just going to add a 0 behind it, unless unless you are dealing with decimal points, like that one. If you're dealing with decimal points, something different happens. So 3.7 centimeters, written like this, I would take that decimal point, right? I would take that decimal point and I would move it Okay, so here's my decimal point, right? If I am multiplying 3.7 times 10, I'm going to basically move that decimal point over one place value over, okay? And 3.7 would then become... 37. Okay, I'm going to erase that here. And then I'm going to change 3.7 into 37, 37 millimeters. Okay? The same would be true for 49.6, I would just move that decimal point, one over, and I would take 8 tenths of a centimeter, 8 tenths, 
you think about where it would lie right here, 8 tenths of a centimeter is 8 millimeters. You see where that lies, okay? Number three is the same thing, except I'm going from centimeters to meters, okay? So I'm thinking backwards, because most of the, the data is on the right side, the meter side, okay? So one meter is the equivalent of 100 centimeters, okay? Another way of thinking about one meter is I could put one and then put a decimal point and add two zeros behind it. So 1.00, okay? So if I think about 180 centimeters, 180 is more than 100, so that's more than one meter, but it's less than two meters, okay? So I could call 180 centimeters 1.80 meters, because again, when I multiply something by 100, I'm adding two zeros behind it. If I'm dividing by groups of 100, uh-oh, division, I'm basically taking that decimal point, which exists on the right side of the zero, but you don't see it because it's assumed. I'm going to take that decimal point and move it one, two places over. So 180 centimeters becomes 1.8 meters, okay? So the last example I'll do is this one right here, 23.6 meters. So 23.6 times 100, uh, if it was whole numbers, I would just add two zeros. But what I'm really going to do is I'm going to add two place values, 23.6 if the decimal's here, I'm going to move it one, two places over, okay? So that decimal place gets taken out and replaced over here behind a zero. So my new number is 2,360 centimeters, okay? So 2,360. So I basically took the decimal point and I moved it over to the right two places to convert from meters to centimeters. Okay? And then finally we are looking at factors for 63 numbers that I can multiply together to get to 63. Well, I know that uh, 1 is a factor because all numbers have 1 as a factor because I can multiply it by itself, 63. I also remember my times tables that 9 times 7 gives me 63. Um, 63 is an odd number, which means that uh, 2 is not a factor, and that also means I can't multiply any uh, even numbers together to get an odd product, because every time there's an even factor, there always has to be an even product. So that eliminates... 2, 4, 6, 8, and 0. So that just leaves us with uh, 3 and 5 because I already have 1, I have 7, and I have 9. Now, this doesn't end in 5, so I know that's not a factor uh, because uh, numbers with 5 as a factor end in 5 or 0. But what about 3? How many groups of 3 can I get out of 63? Well, if I break 63 down... 63 is 60 and 3, right? Now, 60 is just 6 tens, and 6 is a multiple of, of 3, right? Because it's 20 times 3. 20 times 3 gives me uh, 60. I lost my train of thought there for a second. And then 3 is 1 times 3, okay? So by breaking this down into parts, I realized that I could multiply 21 times 3 to get to 63. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, how do I know that's true? Well, multiplication is just repeated addition. So if I were to take three groups of 21 and add them together, like so, 
I would get 63. So that works. So I have three factor pairs. 1 times 63, 9 times 7, and 21 times 3. Okay? Uh, if you have questions about centimeters, millimeters, factors, uh, multiplying by 100 or dividing by 100, or measuring objects in your house, talk to your math teacher. They would be happy to help you. Otherwise, friends, we will talk again soon. Thanks.